Hey, I'm Sandro, and today I want to talk to you about my working desk. If uh, you're like me, and during the past almost a year, you spent a lot of time working at home during these uh, corona times, well, I've certainly come to appreciate the value of, uh, of a standing desk. It uh, switches up your day, you can spend some time sitting, some time standing, and it generally is, is very healthy and, um, uh, and a very pleasant change for your daily routine to just be standing for some time. Uh, especially during meetings, I like it. But if you're like me, then you don't like having to continuously push a button and when you do push it and want to change uh, the position of the table, you never really know where to put it because there's no reference. So A, you could buy a way more expensive table that has a memory function or you could just automate it. Let me show you how that is done. So I wanted to continue using the original buttons of the table and added an additional switch held in place here by a 3D printed part, which will put the table into its top and bottom position. I designed a state machine um, shown here. It uh, basically has five different um, states. The shift up and shift down are the ones with uh, for the switch and moving up and moving down would be when you use the button to manually still move the table and obviously stop in the middle. Then there's um, all the sensors and uh, switches that actually do state transitions uh, as, as laying out here. Additionally, there's a timer um, and an end switch at the lowest point of the table just uh, to have some security functions if one of the hall sensors, for example, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't fire. So um, I built this state machine out on, uh, uh, on, on, on code and um, this obviously is all available on the GitHub site and flashed a uh, Arduino Nano. Then I set up a prototype here with a, with a relay and an additional LED simulating the, the motors, having buttons uh, to move the table up and down, down here to switch. Here uh, we check the timer function, the switch works for I think three seconds and then it breaks out. This is the um, end switch that I'm, that I'm testing here, which immediately interrupts the motor as soon as it pressed. Um, and finally, the uh, hall sensor, where I'm using a small magnet, um, that as soon as the hall sensor detects a magnet, the, again, the motor motion is stopped. So to reuse the original parts of, uh, of the electric table, here you see the leads to the buttons and the power uh, converter. Uh, I wanted to keep these parts uh, original and not, not change those. I just um, took everything from the, from the front part, from the button, and um, reverse engineered which uh, leads would do what, uh, labeled those so I can reuse them later, and um, hook up the original motor leads to the relays uh, that I want to control <clears throat> via the Arduino. Um, so here we see the uh, wiring diagram uh, of the Arduino and one thing to note here is that all the inputs, um, well in order for them not to be floating and have um, unsure inputs, I put uh, pull down resistors and here I just want to quickly show you a, a trick that I've been using also to, to create my keyboard um, where I um, uh, remove some insulation in the middle of the cable, which actually works pretty well. Just pull it back a little bit there and you have a small, small gap where you can um, hook up whatever you need. And so you don't actually need to create an additional cable. You just continue using the cable you, you've had before. Uh, hook up the uh, pull down resistor, um, fit um, another lead to it. Uh, insulate this all and then basically you have a cable that you can continue using as before for, for your normal normal signal here from the switch. Um, additionally fitted with the pull down resistor to make sure that there's no floating floating inputs. I designed a couple of um, CAD parts. Uh, this is the um, PCB holder that also holds two relays. This part here holds the switch and is attached to the bottom of the of the table. 
one of the magnet holders where you can this part will, will just hold the lower magnet and you can slide it on there in order to fix the, the position of the table and this is one of the um, hall sensor holders that I'm using in the front and on the bottom of the table to um, to hold the sensors here we see uh, here we see the main PCB printing and as soon as that's actually done we can start laying out the components on the um, on the printed uh, holding part. Here I fitted them with additional left and right a uh, couple of connectors that I am um, all all short circuited those uh, in order to have more ground and five volt uh, connections since basically all the relays and um, switches and everything we need we need ground and five volt pulled uh, pulled down. Here I'm installing the lower um, lower hall sensor. Uh, as you can see the magnet can slide on this uh, little magnet holder I printed. That's the way you can then um, finally adjust the lower position of the table where you want to have it and the hall sensor that um, fits it and detects the, the lower position of the table. I'm just gluing it here with hot glue. Uh, I figured well let's try it. If hot glue holds then why not? If not you can still um, start using a better type of glue like a two component epoxy something which definitely will hold hold on the metal so surface but so far the hot glue has actually worked quite well and is easy to remove in case you want to change things up. On the back of the table I screwed the hall sensor holder on there and as you can see the hall sensor holder is a bit um, it's a bit of a rigid part. I made sure that um, the hall sensor would be protected if accidentally I were to hit the table and, and, and push the table against the back wall so I don't want to damage the hall sensor. That's why the, um, I printed a bit of a sturdy piece that actually also gives me the distance I want to the back wall automatically from its form factor. Um, once I have the lower uh, the back part of the table uh, at the upper position where I want it, I can uh, more or less measure where I want to put the second magnet holder. Again, I can slide the magnet on there to uh, finally adjust the top position of the of the table. Um, hammering that on the wall with a uh, with two small nails, and as you can see, you can um, slide across the um, the the hall sensor uh, without it touching it, and the uh, sturdy build of the hall sensor mount makes sure that um, that it doesn't touch the back wall. Attaching the leads, I generated here. I'm using uh, Dupont connectors. Uh, generally, all the cables I built, uh, I was using Dupont connectors. And then attaching everything um, under the table so that it's just nicely hidden away from, from plain sight using a couple of uh, well drilled holes and, and using a couple of small screws to fix everything to the table. And once it's set and there, well, then comes the wiring part where um, I just fit everything out with the uh, Dupont connectors and I plug it in to the right uh, previously defined pins on the Arduino. Now before I hooked up the motor part I tried it out with just the um, uh, relays attached and since they have lamps or, or LEDs actually it helps me to check the functionality just to be sure that I didn't do anything wrong in terms of the wiring and once you're happy then that's the moment where you can actually hook up the motors and that's basically the last step you have to do and uh, test it out and hopefully have the uh, moving desk as, uh, as you desired. So here we see it moving up to the top position, expecting the hall sensor to find the uh, top magnet and as soon as it's there, it stops the motion of the table just as desired. Same thing when going down. We can see the relays active, going down, the hall sensor waiting for the contact with the magnet and bam as soon as it's there table stops. So I hope that my little project made your homeworking experience just a little bit better or at least a little bit cooler. Thanks for watching and please do subscribe and like the video. Until next time!